Public life is over. Public man has passed his peak. Public life is over. Why Richard Sennett was right. A critical discussion by Dr. Claudia Simone Dorsha. Public life is over, or at least so changed that we have to reconstruct it. On 30 January 2020, the World Health Organization declared a quote-unquote public health emergency of international concern caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus starting in China. Fear is rampant even more than the virus itself. The real empirical epidemic risk of infection with COVID-19 is by no means to be trivialized here, but it is now philosophically about another aspect that has so far been neglected in the public debate, the cultural significance of a worldwide restriction of public space. What remains undisputed, in contrast to the origin of the virus, is its devastating effect. The World Health Organization explicitly mentions, quote unquote, measures to restrict movement and public life, which should be introduced by many European countries and have largely already been implemented. This is not another medical virological analysis or prognosis, but a philosophical reminder of the value of the public sphere itself, which is currently in the greatest danger. For public life is precisely a constitutive criterion of what we call culture and in this respect the decline of public life affects culture as such. The division between the public and the private and also the precise definition of what belongs to one or the other realm is one of the oldest divisions of all that every culture makes. The majority of the philosophers of antiquity emphasized the value of the public sphere and demanded that citizens actively participate in the public sphere in the form of discussions, holding public office and politic. Aristotle, who understood man primarily as a quote-unquote soum politikon, which means social living being, emphasized the relationship between the citizen and the public sphere. The citizen is not conceivable without his sphere of validity in the public sphere. And so restrictions of the public sphere also affect the state of civil society. Since the 20th century, however, modern civil society has been subject to massive, quite extra-occidental changes that affect the boundary between the public and the private. Richard Sennett has written a work on the changing meaning of the public sphere, The Fall of Public Men, 1977. Sennett argues that the space of the public sphere in Europe is in a constant state of decline, whereas until the 18th century the marketplace, the street and the theatre had an educational and formative function, sparked discussions and called for active participation, today such public institutions are places of pure observation and consumption. In postmodernity, the active citizen who contributes to the public space, which also means the Greek word theatre, through word and deed, has become a passive spectator, as well as a subject and object of mutual control, and the tendency of this restriction is increasing. Insofar as states now not only welcome the passivity of the citizen, but even take measures to limit his public participation and even minimize the private and transgenerational exchange, an accelerated realization of Senate's dystopian vision of the future is apparently taking place at present. The small world is becoming even smaller. Where the public decays, culture per se decays and with its public justification. There, civil society encounters on the public terrain wither 
into an unproductive enclosure of the self. The demanded retreat into the private sphere does not serve culture and thus also not the human being in its double role as a biological entity and cultural creator, but defines its reductionistically as the mere body that must be protected from infection. In this media-fueled reduction of the human self-understanding of the vulnerable body, not only massive fears, but also civic desensitization are introduced. COVID-19 puts the crown on learned powerlessness. <laughs>